All right, so in this chapter, we are going to talk about oscillations. So oscillations are everywhere in the world around us. You have oscillations at the level of atoms, uh, and uh, you can also have oscillations in stars, very, very large systems. So why do you have oscillations? Well, any kind of oscillating system uh, is characterized by uh, restoring force or torque. So let me just give you an example of that. So let's take the simplest possible example of an oscillation, which is the spring mass system. And since that's one of the easiest systems, we are going to focus on that a lot in this chapter. So the spring mass system consists of a spring which is connected to a mass. And the mass is sitting on an absolutely frictionless surface. What would happen if you displace this mass a little bit? So if you move this mass a little bit to the right, maybe move it over here, let's call this point x equals 0, and let's call this point x. So you've, you've stretched the spring by an amount x uh, and let the mass go. So what it's, what's going to happen is that the mass is going to feel a force to the left, which, want, which will try to bring it back to x equals 0. You might recognize this force back from chapter 11. We call this kind of force, which try, tends to bring a system back towards equilibrium, as a restoring force. So when you displace this mass, so originally the mass was in equilibrium. When the spring was not stretched, uh, all the forces on it were 0. But when you stretched it, there was a force on it, which tends to bring it back to the equilibrium point. So you can clearly see that there is a restoring force in this case. What's, what's, uh, what's going to happen next if you let it go? So the mass will come back to x equals 0. The restoring force will vanish at x equals 0 because you know that the spring is not stretched, so there is no reason for the spring to exert any force at that point. However, the mass is not going to stop at x equals 0. It will, as a result of inertia, it will continue moving and maybe move somewhere over here. To the other side. At that point, the spring will be squeezed. And so once again, you're going to have a restoring force, but to the right. And that will push the mass back towards x equals 0. But it will again have a velocity. And so it won't stop at x equals 0. It will go over to the other side. And so the system will just keep oscillating back and forth. If there is no friction, then this oscillation will just continue forever. OK, so you can see that any kind of periodic motion or oscillation uh, needs to have a restoring force. It could also be a restoring torque, not necessarily a restoring force. And I can show you an example of a restoring torque. OK, consider a pendulum. Uh, a simple pendulum just consists of a massless string. Uh, with the point mass attached at the other end. Point mass just means that the mass doesn't have any appreciable uh, spatial extent. And the string is also very, very light. Okay, So if you just let this mass hang, then it's in equilibrium. The system is in equilibrium. But suppose you displace the mass by a certain angle. Now it's no longer in equilibrium because you have the gravitational force acting down like this. And as you can see, the gravitational force exerts a torque uh, about the pivot point. Right? Um, you can easily find the torque of the gravitational force about the pivot point. Um, and so this torque will try to rotate the pendulum back to its equilibrium position. Right? So this is an example of a restoring torque. And, and the same thing will happen. So once the torque, uh, once the uh, the torque brings the pendulum back to its equilibrium position, uh, the torque will disappear because the gravitational force will act straight down 
like this, um, it's not going to exert any torque about the point O because as you as, as it should be clear to you by now, if a force passes through uh, the reference point, if the line of action of the force passes through the reference point, then the torque is zero. But the pendulum is not going to stop at that point. It's going to keep swinging until it gets to the other side. And then once again, there will be a torque exerted by its weight. And so you're, you're again going to have a restoring torque which tries to bring it back to its equilibrium position. And so the result of that is that the pendulum will just keep swinging back and forth along this arc. So that's an example of a restoring torque. So whenever you have any oscillating system, you have a restoring force or a restoring torque which repeatedly tries to bring the system back to its equilibrium position. But the system doesn't stop at its equilibrium position because of inertia and it just, uh, and, and so the oscillation just continues. Okay. So any oscillating system is characterized by a restoring force or a restoring torque. If this restoring force or torque is proportional to the displacement, then the resulting motion is called a simple harmonic motion. So a simple harmonic motion is the simplest possible oscillation or the simplest possible periodic motion in which the restoring force or torque is directly proportional uh, to the displacement. Uh, I mean, the restoring force is directly proportional to the displacement the restoring torque is directly proportional to the angular displacement theta. This, then the motion is called a simple harmonic motion. What if the restoring force is not proportional to the displacement? Uh, in that case, it, you would have a periodic motion, but it would uh, be a more complicated oscillation. Uh, and so that would be beyond the scope of this analysis. So we are only looking at um, restoring forces or torques which are proportional to the displacement. Okay, you can easily see that that is the case at least in the first analysis that we did. So, so let's look at uh, the restoring force uh, in the case of the spring mass system. So when you displace the mass out to a distance x, then what is the force acting on the mass. Now let me just draw a separate one over here. So suppose you have your spring like this. This is x equals zero. Now suppose you've displaced the mass out to some x. Okay, what is the force what is the restoring force? So you know from long time ago that the force exerted by a spring is given by Hooke's law and uh, the force F is equal to minus kx, right? So you can see that the restoring force here is just the Hooke's law force and you can see right away that it is directly proportional to the amount of displacement. So this is an example of simple harmonic motion What would not be an example of simple harmonic motion? Suppose you had uh, a force which was characterized, uh, uh, suppose you have some really weird wonky spring which does not obey Hooke's law, right? So suppose in, for that uh, weird spring, F is equal to, instead of being minus kx, it's minus kx to the power of three, right? Uh, that, would be, that would also cause oscillations uh, because this is a restoring force, but it would not necessarily, those oscillations would be a little more complicated, and so we would not call them uh, SHM. So this is not SHM, but it would definitely be oscillations, because this would also be a restoring force. And what is a restoring force again? A force which tries to bring the system back towards equilibrium. So that's a restoring force, right? So this particular restoring force would not produce simple harmonic motion, though it would produce some kind of oscillations. This one will produce 
simple harmonic motion. Okay. All right. Now we had looked at the example with the torque. You can prove that the torque produced by mg is going to uh, be proportional to the angular displacement theta. Uh, I'm going to, when we get to angular oscillations, I'm going to actually show that to you. So here also the restoring torque produced by mg, you can show that it's approximately proportional to, um, it's approximately proportional to some constant, I mean, uh, or I can write it like this, it's approximately some constant times theta. This I'll show to you later on. So my point here is that since the torque is, is proportional to theta, this is also an example of simple harmonic motion. So whenever the restoring force or the restoring torque is proportional to uh, the displacement for the force and the angular displacement for the torque, then we say that the motion is uh, simple harmonic. And this, this should have a negative sign. The motion is simple harmonic motion. Okay. So let's continue analyzing. Uh, okay, let me first show you, see if I can show you the simulation. All right, so I would recommend playing around with the simulation a little bit uh, yourself. And let's see if we can get it to work. Okay, so this is a simulation of a spring mass system. And uh, you can see what's happening. So if you stretch the mass out to a certain x max, then there is a force, a restoring force, which pulls it towards x equals zero. And then the mass gets to x equals zero, overshoots, goes over to the other side. And then the force is acting in the opposite direction and it brings it back to um, x equals zero. And, and the overshoot happens again and, the, and, this, and this just keeps repeating 